Hi, I'd like to show you a Morse code secret server that I developed with some of my students to teach client server programming in Python. A server is code that provides a web application and a client is a program that connects to such a server. The server holds a secret and you ask for the secret and it tells you that you have to give a password via Morse code. How are we going to do that? Well, we have to know what the password is, so let's look at the code here. Uh, and the password is so long that to do the Morse code for it, that would take us a long time, so I'm going to change it so the password is just A. And the Morse code for A is, as you can see here, dot dash, as represented by the dot and the hyphen here. Let's restart the server and back to the browser and then I can decode it so dot dash so code slash dot so far so good dash and now the server has unlocked the secret for this client um, whoever is at this IP address and now I ask for the secret again and there's the secret Let's um, change the password back to the longer abracadabra, and then I'll run the client. Restarting the server since I changed the password, and then I'm switching over to the client, and I'm going to run the client, and the client does it all very fast for the whole password, uh, gets unlocked, and then gets the secret. Um, the server shows messages about what happened and you can see these HTTP requests coming in dot dash dash dot dot they're all succeeding this is these are codes 200 and then eventually the client is unlocked um, after all 30 elements have been matched and then the client requests the secret um, let's see how this works here in this module, codes, we have the password and then a dictionary of all the Morse codes. And then, since we can't use the dot in the browser because it means something else, we have to substitute the words dash and dot for the, uh, the hyphen and the dot. And so that's what this tuple of tuples is used for and these two dictionaries for looking up um, either the word from the symbol or the symbol from the word. And these things are dictionary comprehensions. It's a way to build a dictionary out of some sequence, like in this case, this um, tuple of tuples. Let's see how the client works. Uh, what does it import? It uses requests to do the HTTP requests and it sleeps and from the codes module it imports the things that I just showed you the URL base you set that to the address of the server and this is how long to delay between letters of the Morse code and let's just jump to the bottom the first thing it does is request the secret and to request the secret it sends it makes an HTTP get request for secret like you saw me do with the browser and then it displays the response which is just plain text um, and the first one fails because it's not unlocked yet then we send the unlock request using the password and this function calls and here's how this works uh, for each letter in the message we look up the Morse code symbols and then for each symbol in those symbols we make the HTTP request to the server and we look up the uh, for a period we look up dot and for the hyphen we look up dash and then we display the response and then we sleep 0 0.2 seconds before we go on to the next letter once we've done that assuming everything works then the server has unlocked us and we can call request secret again and then we'll get the secret that's the client. Here's the server.
it's a little bit longer. We use time because we keep track of some things. This time function gives the number of seconds since January 1st, midnight, 1970. And we use Flask to make the web application. And we use the same um, elements from codes, the codes module. These two lines enable us to do logging, which is something that's worth knowing about. And we show all logging messages from the debug level um, to the more severe info, warning, error. Then these responses come back as plain text. It's not HTML, so that's why we create this uh, response header. This is how many seconds to stay unlocked after the client unlocks. This is how long to wait for the next letter in the password. After that time passes, then the client has to start over. And this is a sequence of all the Morse codes for the password. And this dictionary is used to keep track of the progress of any cli uh, clients that are connecting to the server. And keep in mind that more than one client could be um, running through this at once. So we have to keep track of where each client is. This class stores data for each remote user making requests. And what do we need to keep track of? Well, the number of elements matched so far. And since we time out after 10 seconds, we need to store the time of the last request. And then if they get to be unlocked, we store the time of that. Um, otherwise, we have none, which means uh, that it's locked. Here, we use this um, bit of Flask that says that when the client uses the HTTP request in the form slash code slash something, this function gets called. So here, this code function gets called with a code word, which should be dash or dot. And we look up um, the symbol for that, and if it's not uh, found, then we return with an error, 404, you probably know that, um, page not found, and say that it must be dash or dot. And here we look up the, or here we, we use the request um, feature of Flask to find the remote address of the client. And we save that in, a, in another variable just because it's shorter. You see we use it one, two, three um, places here. Then we go into our dictionary where we keep track of the state for all the clients and we see if we've encountered this client before. We do a get on the address and if, if we have already saved information for that user then we retrieve that. Otherwise, we create an empty or a new user state that's initialized via this init method here. Then we store the state for that user back into the dictionary. Then we want to know if we've timed out. So we look at the time of the last request plus timeout seconds. Um, so let's say the last request was five seconds ago. The timeout seconds is 10 seconds, which puts us five seconds ahead. So this would not be true, so it wouldn't time out. But if it does, then we log a message and we reset this elements matched to zero so that they have to start again. Then we record the time that it is now that they're making the request. Then we look up the next code that they uh, should be sending. And if they've sent the right code, then we do this. If they haven't sent the right code, then we lock them, reset the elements matched, give them um, a 400 response, which is a general uh, request error, and with this message in it. Um, so back to here where they do get the code right, we advance to the next character that we're expecting. And then if we've reached the end, then we reset this so they can run again. And we record the time of the unlock, which, lock, which unlocks them. 
We log a message out and then we return this unlocked message with a 200. If we haven't reached the end, then we log a message about the progress and then we return this keep going uh, message. Okay, that's it for the code uh, function. Uh, the last one is the secret function, and this is where um, the request is in the form of slash secret. And we look to see if we know this client. If we do, and the client is unlocked, then we return this secret. Otherwise, we return this message telling them that they've got to supply the password via Morse code first. The last line is what starts the Flask web application. Finally, I'll just show you on GitHub, github.com slash dcbriccetti, Python lessons. You can find this Morse code secret server in, the, in Flask under web. It's called Morse. And... Um, this is a description of what I've just shown you, what the server does, what the client does, what the codes module does, and the features of Python that the program uses. You can read them here. Um, that's it. Maybe you want to grab the code and play with it. Thanks for watching.